Hello everyone, back to tuning in to today's only video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next 10 to 14 days for today's only video. Uh, day 10 will take us to around the 25th of March and we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the XNG GFS and ECM ensembles because they run trying to couple of weeks. Have a look at the CFS feature at the end of the video for the next four weeks and we'll begin with development stratosphere wise. So I'll get off that for you in a moment. Uh, so there was a 6 a.m. upload because I took yesterday after I recorded the 6 a.m. uploads, you know, the night before. So, um, <coughs> excuse me, there was a 6 a.m. upload. Hopefully there will be one uh, tomorrow, but there won't be a 10 to 14 day tomorrow as I'm having the tooth out. So the tooth is a lot better. I'm on uh, antibiotics and uh, doubling up on them uh, for the moment to uh, try and get on top of the uh, abscess. I mean, tomorrow the tooth is coming out and then that should be the end of that little saga and that side of my mouth will be okay but we still wait to find out the results of a biopsy on this side of uh, my mouth one thing after another at the moment one thing after another it's just one of those times that we're going through but thank you so much uh, everybody for all of your lovely lovely messages and uh, and yeah i'm fine you know uh, just 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 tooth problems that uh that, that we all get at some point or another but um everything's fine thank you so much for all of the lovely lovely messages uh everyone uh, right, okay, so let's uh, have a look at temperatures at 10 HPA in the stratosphere over the uh, North Pole then. It's from the JMA, so temperatures are currently sitting around uh, there, somewhere around minus 47, minus 48. We have dropped from uh, the near minus 30, but we had uh, early on in March when we had the first warming of the stratosphere uh, to 10 HPA. We've dropped from that, but we're still a little bit above average, actually, with those temperatures at 10 HPA. We're still a little bit above the grey line. We should be around minus 15 at uh, this time of the year. So we're above that, but... Um, but uh, we have dropped from where we was, you know, like like a week or so ago. We're going to go a little bit, bit low down to 30 HPA. Their temperatures have gone quite a bit colder. So um, back at the beginning of March, we did get a significant warming from minus 80 to minus 15 at 30 HPA. We're now down somewhere close around minus 17. So we're cold on average at 30 HPA, but a little bit above average still at 10 HPA. Further warming is on the way. This is the latest GFS uh, forecast for temperatures at 10 HPA, where we've got these blue colours. These are the cold temperatures in the stratosphere at uh, 10 HPA. And over the next few days, over the next day or two, you know, next couple of days, those blue colours will continue. But notice, uh, in around three days' time, we get this next warming of the stratosphere beginning to gather pace over Siberia. This is the uh, second warming that we've been highlighting over the past week or two. This is another significant warming of the stratosphere at 10 HPA from Siberia and pushing into the Arctic and into the North Pole. But I think this one could be the killing blow for the polar vortex, although it's not reaching a sudden stratospheric warming type temperature level because we're not going into the red colours. As it's like a second significant warming of the stratosphere, I reckon this one could be the killing blow for the polar vortex and this could be the one that sends, polar, that sends zonal winds into uh, reverse and really kills off the polar vortex. Uh, for this season, those uh, yellow and, and yellow green colours, they continue, you know, for the next uh, for the next uh, few days after uh, a week out too. So um, all the way up to the very end of the GFS 6 April, it gets to the last day of March today. Those yellow colours are still just sitting there over the top of the Arctic and over the top of the North Pole as well. Warming uh, continuing and uh, it's a long-lasting, sustained warming of the stratosphere as well, but I reckon could send zonal winds into reverse. This is the latest zonal wind forecast from weatheriscool.com looking at the GFS ensemble. So zonal winds are already weakening at the moment, although they're still a little bit stronger than an average, that's the black line. But the GFS ensembles are forecasting further, they have the green lines, forecasting further weakening of zonal winds and by the time we get into the uh, final week or so of March, there is a good chance that we will have a reversal of zonal winds where we have this zero line just here you see how many of the GFS ensemble members are dipping below the zero line. So it definitely looks, looks as though at 10 HPA zone of winds are likely to go into reverse courtesy of that second significant warming of the strategy. ECM is also showing this as well. 
which is the Zona Wind forecast from University of Berlin, based on uh, the ECM. And the blue line is, is uh, Zona Wind's at 10 HK, the red line is Zona Wind's at 30 HK. We don't get a reversal of Zona Wind's at 30 HK, but we do get a reversal of Zona Wind's if the forecast is correct at uh, 10 HK. That's that uh, black dash line uh, just there, and we do see like a reversal of uh, Zona Wind's at 10 HK. So, uh, yeah, significant developments uh, taking place in the stratosphere uh, in the next few days. And uh, this could well be the end of this year's polar vortex. It's been a strong polar vortex we've had again this winter, but we could be seeing the, the final end of it. We'll keep you updated, of course. Of course, we're going to wait and see whether we get a blocking signal within the troposphere from these stratospheric developments. That's a big unknown, whether going into April we'll set up northern blocking. If we do, will we start to get things colder into April? We had a very cold April last year, of course. Could we have another cold April this year? You don't always get a tropospheric response, so just stratospheric warming. So we'll just have to wait and see. If we do, you know, we might not get the blocking on the on our side of the pole, you know, to push cold air to into Europe. So just gonna wait and see how this plays out. We'll keep you posted. Right, centering temperature is currently standing at seven point one. That is two degrees above average, turning into a mild March, following on from the very mild February, where we had six point eight, which was three degrees above average. January came out at four point six, which was only point eight of a degree above average. That is provisional to yesterday to the fourteenth of uh, March. I reckon it's gonna be another mild on average month. The question will be how above average will we be? Very often February and March do follow one another. We might have a look at this in a video uh, in, in the next few days, but very often February and March do follow one another with the trend. So if you have a mild February, very often you will get a mild March, and it's the same the other way around. You get a cold February, very often you'll get a cold March. Um, not always. You get deviations, of course, to anything, but, uh, but yeah, you know, uh, it is typical for uh, for a mild February after, uh, for a mild March after a mild February, and, and that's what we've seen there. Right, these are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles uh, for the next couple of weeks. We're at Birmingham today. So the red line is the 30 year upper air temperature average for Birmingham. Starting off a little bit above average at the moment. We're going to go cooler in the next few days. And then temperatures, upper air temperatures, really lifting up at the end of week into the weekend and early part of next week. And then just generally solidly above average, really, as we go through the last week or so of March. Just uh, generally above average, you know, with those upper air temperatures for the next week or so. We could turn things a little bit colder by end of March. There are some cold outliers appearing. Um... But, you know, their outliers, the trend looks like it's above average, really, uh, through to the end of, uh, of the month. Precipitation wise, going to be a lot of dry weather over next week. There is some wet weather being forecast there uh, for uh, Thursday into Friday. But other than that, not really much in the way of precipitation for the next week or so. Maybe getting a bit more unsettled as we move on through the last week of the month. Of course, that's more extended range. And even then, it doesn't, doesn't look overly wet. But the next week, anyway, it's looking relatively dry. Temperature anomalies from the 15th, 23rd of March. Uh, the normal to slightly above average. I think we're going to get some cold nights on setting warmer days, and so that explains why, although the ensemble graph of the upper air temperatures is pretty solidly above average, actually it's not that um, above average on the surface. Uh, it does look a lot colder across the eastern and southeastern part of Europe, from uh, the Asiatic to the Black Sea to Turkey and Greece. Still, the cold weather continues uh, through the southeast Europe. It's the north and the west that are milder. And precipitation uh, anomalies from the 15th, 23rd of March, largely drier than average, particularly for more northern and western areas. The latest info map from EarthNullSchool.net shows up drawing up a southerly flow today. So, um, another pretty spring-like day uh, that we are currently experiencing. Uh, we'll have a look at some chart data in a moment. In fact, let's do that now, shall we? So we're going to start off with the UK Met Euro for midnight on Friday. High pressure will be dominating the weather at the end of the week, bringing a lot of dry weather with it. That high pressure intensifies into the weekend, bringing in a bit of an east-southeast. That will probably have a chill to it. Overnight, it's going to be quite cold, maybe frosty. I think by day, 
would be relatively pleasant unless we drag in a lot of cloud with this east south east so we could do if we do that then it could be quite a cold gray sort of cheerless uh weekend so i have to wait to see about that early next week the high pressure begins to sit eastwards and we start to bring some lower pressure into the west and south drawing up a southerly wind so it will be mild but this low pressure could start to bring some showery rain into western and southwestern uh areas so maybe by the middle of next week turning a little bit more and so but it should be mild with those southerly southeasterly winds I can't, again, showing a lot of dry weather on Friday as high pressure is dominating weather and that carries on into the uh, weekend as well. The high pressure slips east, so we're pulling more of an easterly flow. It could drag in quite a lot of cloud with it and uh, we could have some quite cold nights as well. Early next week, that high pressure begins to slip eastwards and we start to pull up more of a southerly, southeasterly type flow. Um, and, you know, that will be quite mild and we might start doing some showery rain into uh, southern and western areas by the middle of next week. Notice the icon is starting to try and raise heights a little bit in the North Atlantic. Could that be setting up a bit of a northerly plunge by the end of next week? It's a long way off, so it's impossible to say, but it's trying to raise heights a little bit in the North Atlantic up towards Greenland. The uh, GFS Midnight Run, again, has that area of high pressure dominating the weather on Friday, and that carries on into the weekend. Again, we're pulling in these sort of east south easterly winds, so it could be turning a little bit uh, a little bit cooler, maybe bringing this cloud in from the east, might turn a bit colder, but I don't think it's going to be overly cold. We're not bringing the air in from, like, a long way east, not bringing the air in from the Euros. The cold kind of yeah, this is still into the east and the southeast of Europe, really, with these north northeasterly winds. So, I think it'll be a bit of a chill over the weekend, maybe. But, um, by night, anyway, it could be quite chilly. But, by day, I would imagine if the sun's out, it's not too bad. And then, on into the open next week, lower pressure begins to push in from the west and south. That brings showery rain uh, with it. Not for long, though. High pressure quickly re-establishes as we get towards day 10 and turns it drier and uh, milder again. In the more extended range, that high pressure starts to pull out to our northwest. We start to bring in something just a little bit cooler from the north and northeast. And by the very end of a GFS midnight run, actually we're taking high pressure towards Greenland and we're pulling in a cold north or northeasterly wind. So blast of wintry weather for the last day of March. That would be typical for the warming of the stratosphere. You know, that might be a, a response to the stratospheric warming but as it's over two weeks away, you know, it, it's really unreliable at the moment. So we'll just wait and see about that. We may we, we, we may get that setting up, you know, as we go towards April. It would be what you'd expect to see from this warming of the stratosphere if we get the zone of wind into reverse. But, um, you know, just wait and see about that. It's a very, very long way off. GFS 6Z, again, it looks like this. A lot of high pressure domination over the weekend, bringing him away from an east or south east direction. So, uh, pretty mild, I think, as we go through uh, the weekend. Into the early part of next week, lower pressure diverts out to our west and south. We draw up this southerly, southeasterly flow. That could bring some showery rain with it through the early to middle part of next week. Um, and that carries on up towards day 10, really. We've got the high pressure sitting over to the east country, but we've still got this sort of trough thing messing about to the southwest, bringing the risk of further showery bursts through there. In the more acceleration, high pressure goes north, or tries to go north. So again, similar to the midnight run, we're trying to pull in colder air from the north, from the northeast. So it doesn't come off, really, on this uh, 6 set run. We just keep that high pressure sat over the country as we get to the end of March. Moving on to the GEM, and if you're enjoying this video, then please give me smash that like button. Make sure you sub to the channel. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. And drop a comment, let us know about missing all of our videos. Thank you so much. We're trying to get to 13.3k. We are so close to it. Uh, so please give us a sub. Tell friends and family to subscribe. Get us to 13.3k. Thank you so much. Right, the GEM, again, with a lot of high pressure... Uh, at the end of the week and into the weekend. We bring in a bit of an easy, especially in the south. That could bring some cloud with it. Then the lower pressure develops to our west and south early next week, bringing risk of showing rain. But we are drawing up a southerly wind, so I imagine that could lift temperatures at least to the mid teens Celsius. And that's why we keep it pretty mild, but uh, still with a lot of high pressure for southern areas anyway. Very spring-like conditions as we get to day 10, which is the 25th of March. And then finally for these charts, we've got the ECM, which once more is showing high pressure, dominating the weather over and to the east of the country for the weekend. Only next week turns a little bit more showery, but will be very mild with these southerly winds. And the high pressure fest just goes on right way up to day 10. So very, very spring-like conditions, warm days. Could be chilly by night, I suppose, with risk of some overnight frost, but definitely warm by day. 
Um, and I'll dry weather with that as well under the area of high pressure. This is a precipitation forecast based on that ECM run from Spreadshow.com. So I've got wet weather coming up tomorrow. Um, Wednesday, going to be some quite heavy rain, many parts of the country. Then after that, the trend is towards drier weather, uh, really as that high pressure takes over at the end of week into weekend. Only next week, a little bit showery, a little bit showery rain, pushing it up from the south for the early part of next week. So that could be quite heavy for a time, but then the trend is back to high pressure as we go to day 10 and back to those mostly dry conditions. These are the options on the table within the ECM Ensembles Day for day 10, which gets the 25th of March. 17 members of the ECM Ensembles with low pressures Greenland and Iceland, high pressure over the country, uh, jet stream push north, was lots of dry weather with that and um, pretty fine 14 including the operational run have the high pressure over and just slightly to our north bringing wind from a little bit of an easterly direction but won't be cold the high pressure not far enough north to bring in cold leases so again dry and spring like really about 12 with lower pressure to our north high pressure pulled out into the Atlantic. That's more unsettled and a little bit colder with winds in from west or northwestern direction and then eight Eight, I should say, with high pressure over the country and slightly to our western northwest, low pressure towards Scandinavia. Uh, once more, lots of dry weather with that, and you would have thought quite spring like, to say the least. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. We'll get us to the 30th of March. 16 members of the ECM ensembles have high pressure to the south and low pressure to the north. Jet stream will be pushed north, lots of dry weather, particularly so for southern areas and probably quite mild. Now, 14 bringing a wintry blast, which will be in line with. The GFS midnight run by the end of March, taking the high pressure into the Atlantic and moving it towards Greenland and Iceland. Travel low pressure over Scandinavia and Northern Europe, and between the high and the low, we bring in the wind from a cold north or northeasterly direction. So that's a bit of a wintry blast by the end of March 14, going in that direction. 12 with low pressure uh, uh, over the country and slightly to our south, high pressure towards Scandinavia. Probably a bit showery with that and not overly cool, although we are probably on the cool side of the jet stream. And then nine with high pressure just to our north and northwest. Around that we would bring in winds from a not particularly cold easterly type direction. We might get a blast of uh, wintry weather at the end of March. We shall have to wait and see. Finally, the CFS V2, these are 500 millibar heights, break it down into weekly periods. The first week period is going to take us from the 15th to 21st of March. The coming week, we'll have high pressure over and to the east of the country. Low pressure will be away to the northwest. We'll be drawing up wind from more of a southerly or southeast direction. Mostly dry and mild and spring light with that. Uh, week 2 will be the 22nd, 28th of March. High pressure is in over Scandinavia. Around that, we bring in the wind from an easterly direction. Again, it should be a lot of dry weather. Could be quite chilly if the wind is coming from far enough east. That is a proper, properly developed Scandinavian high, and the wind is coming from quite a long way east with that as well. So that could be quite cold. But again, the short range model output not really signalling that. Uh, week Three will be the 29th of uh, March to the 4th of April. The high pressure just goes a little bit to our west, but no wintry blast with this. Could just be chilly, bringing wind from the northwest, but not pulling in like a proper northerly. But trough is still in over Greenland as opposed to Scandinavia. So, you know, it could be quite cool, but not particularly cold. And then week four is going to be the 5th to the 11th of April. High pressure then sits over and to the east of the country. And we bring up probably quite a mild southerly wind. So it doesn't look like we get any northern blocking in place from this stratospheric warming if the CFS is correct. But of course, we'll have to wait and see. And we're done. So if you enjoyed the video, then please don't smash the like button. Make sure to subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for doing that. Drop a comment. Let us know what you about this and all of our videos. And don't forget to tell your friends and family about Gaz. Obviously, if everybody who subscribes means a friend, we will get to 13.3k and ultimately 14,000 subscribers so much more quickly. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that. Right, so that's it today, 10 to 14 day. We will have a 6 a.m. upload tomorrow, but there's not going to be a 10 to 14 day tomorrow because I'm having a tooth out. Uh, so I don't fancy um, doing a 10 to 14 day when I'll have my two pulled out. So uh, no 10 to 14 day tomorrow. We'll, we'll be a 6 a.m. upload. Hopefully things will be uh, back to normal uh, by Thursday. I appreciate it's a very, you know, lots of chunk changing going on with the videos. Just bear with me. It's been a difficult time. It's continued to be a difficult time here at the Towers. Uh, I'm hoping to get things more or less back on track by, by, for April, you know, by April. So just 
bear with me and uh, and we shall see what happens but for this video, video anyway uh, uh, that's it for now and enjoy the rest of your Tuesday thank you so much for watching bye for now